All right. Um, so uh, welcome back to um, our second session um, for the practical Python programming. So today we will continue with the discussion of uh, chapter two, which is working with data, which basically discusses um, some of the core Python data structures, such as tuples, lists, sets, and dictionary. And we will see many kind of operations that we will be using on them. Um, so he first started discussing about the primitive data types in Python. We have this kind of uh, few primitives, integer, floating, and strings, or like R, where we have many kind of uh, primitive data types. But yeah, these are some of the primitive they use. And the data structure Python has, um, basically, we have tuple, list, dictionary. So what we'll be seeing now today, we'll take one of them each and see how it works, how um, it is manipulated. Now, the first one is called tuple, um, which is basically one of the uh, widely used uh, data structure in Python. And it basically used to uh, store a list of items and uh, the items can be of different kind. For example, this is string, this is uh, integer, this is float. And we use um, of, uh, this uh, to actually uh, create a tuple. So this is actually a tuple. And one thing we should know is that um, the opening and closing braces in tuple, they are just optional, right? So this is also a tuple, this is a tuple. So when we run this, this will actually, um, all right. Mm. So when we run this like this, we'll see, um, yeah, so this is a tuple. When we run this one also, we can see this is tuple. So this is selling at, um, the opening and closing break basis when trying to create a tuple, they are just optional. Um, but we can also see we have some special cases where this is empty tuple, um, and this is also a, sing, a one item tuple. So what this is telling us is that um, if you want to create a single tuple, so here I can say, okay, double O, um, I need to create a single tuple called um, twop. Um, now, if I have this, this is a tuple. This is not only assignment of number two up to W, but this is a tuple. As we can see here, if we have this, oh, um, yeah, so you can see this is tuple. So it means that this open braces and the closed one, they are just optional. So, um, that's what tuple is, and that's how to create a tuple. But we can also create a tuple actually using um, a keyword. For example, you can say, okay, W is equals to uh, tuple. We can say this, I think, right? Is it not is it tuple? Yeah, tuple. So we can say, okay, this, we can create a tuple from list, something like this. Um, yeah, so we can create a tuple like this. So this is actually another way to um, create a tuple. Um, yeah, but also tuple has um, uh, the content in the tuple are actually uh, ordered, meaning uh, they are ordered the first item, the, the orders matters of the item inside a tuple and we can actually subset them. So using this square bracket, we can subset the item. So here X zero will be um, good. The first one X one will be this and this. So um, we should also know that the Python start indexing as well, as we know uh, from um, zero. So it means that one will give us this. What? Anything wrong here? Why is this taking time? Oh, oh okay. So, yeah, so when we have this, uh, we can see, um, yep, this one will give us the first item. So this is called, um, uh, just to uh, um, get an item from the list, we can use this square bracket. Um, you can also, um, uh, because um, tuple, they are what we call immutable. You cannot uh, change the item, um, like list which are immutable. So when you try to update the item, for example, to insert new object into the S3, you see like um, this will give you an error. So this is uh, one of the uh, 
but you can actually uh, modify the content of the tuple um, using the existing tuple. So for example, here, X0 will give me the first item, X2 will give me the third item, but I have another thing here. Now, putting them here, now I have a new tuple, um, uh, which is X and it contains um, some items from the existing tuple. So this, is, this means that um, we can actually create a new tuple from the existing one by slicing the old one to um, create a new one. Right, so that is called tuple. And one of the operation we see for the tuple is what we call tuple packing. So uh, basically tuple are more about packing related items together into a single entity. So what this means is that um, uh, related item, for example, if we have a record um, for a single person, uh, for people, for example, address, um, um, phone number, you can see all these, they are related to a single person, right? So we can store this stuff in what we call um, in, in a tuple. So here you can see we create a tuple um, of this stuff, and uh, that, this is called packing, um, tuple packing. That is putting this stuff together. So there is something called tuple unpacking, which actually uh, trying to remove or get items from this tuple. Um, we can now S contain three items. So now how can we assign each items to a different variable? So this way, this is one way. Uh, so here you can see our S now, the first item good will be assigned to name. The second one will be assigned to share. The third one will be assigned. This is called tuple unpacking. So when we run this, what will actually give us is this. Um, you can see here, we can print course this. Uh, yep, so you can see, uh, oh, course share times price because it uh, multiplied this guy by this guy. So you can see these um, items we have there. But we should know that um, if we have three items in our tuple, now, when we do assignment now to three, two items, this will actually give us an error. So this will generate an error because the tuple, we have three items. So you, we need to have um, a way in which um, uh, uh, it corresponds to that. But um, when we have this, um, so what about this? So if I run this, uh, this does not actually give me an error. So this underscore, we use them in Python when we don't want to actually uh, care about the other object. What I mean by the other object, I mean, um, the, even if I have uh, the first item in the tuple will be assigned this uh, value, the second, but if I have other millions item, they will just be lumped here and they are not needed. So we usually use this when we want to discuss some items that are not needed. But also we can see that um, there is one thing we can do. Um, for example, I have this, uh, I can say, okay, name. And now I have, um, S uh, sh uh, share, so, okay. So here you can see um, I have uh, my S, but remember I have two, three items is my S, right? I have three items, these are the guys inside, but when I use this, it means um, um, the Python will know that, uh, okay, let me show you what happened. So you can see this does not actually generate an error, right? Um, so let's see what will happen. Um, what is name? We can see name is this guy. Yeah, you can see name is two items. And uh, when we look at the price, it will give us a, a single item. So price. Uh, price will give us a single item. Yeah, so what basically does is that Python will know that the last item will be assigned to price, but the first two items will be lumped together to bring a still another uh, uh, list. Can you see that? So this is basically, you can do it in any way, even in the middle. So uh, you can put this. So for example, I have four items. I can use this. So let me create, uh, give another example. If I have this, it's a topo like this. Um, so yeah, so I have uh, this guy. Right, I have this guy, four items, um, and I call this A. Now I can do this, um, I said A is equals to um, this guy, and I say C like this, then I have this. So, um, oh, I did run this guy. When I run this guy, and uh, I run this guy, so this means that C will be assigned to one, C, price will be assigned to four, 
a name will be uh, two and three, right? So, yeah. So this is basically um, top of, um, uh, yeah. Any question before we continue? Or oh, you want to add something? Isabel, you want to add something? Tell I to add, I think it just coming from our confused why why yeah. do we use tuple so like the... yeah yeah so yeah so as you see like um uh they said uh tuple. so we have list um uh as a container and we have tuple so tuple for example one way as they said here is like um, um taking uh items uh which for example record so for example, um, tuple can be used um, to store your item. For example, if you have a website and uh, you store the list of password of people and you see you can store the, those password in tuple with given a person name and his, uh, um, I mean, tuple. So because the password cannot be changed uh, um, uh, because the tuple item, maybe somebody tried to hack and you cannot modify in, uh, I don't know, but um, the basic idea is that the tuple are not, they are immutable and they are also container to contain some items. Yeah, uh, we'll see some kind of comparison later uh, why uh, they are taking, they are comparing the tuple and the list. Oh yeah, here maybe. Tuple look like read only lists. However, tuple are most often used for a single item consisting of multiple parts. Lists are usually a collection of distinct items, usually of, of the same time. So this is the example they give. For example, you can see symbol. This is a list, Google, IBM, Apple. This is of the same time type, right? Uh, maybe a company you just represent, but this is a tuple. Uh, you can see here, uh, maybe uh, as I said, container record of people, uh, person. Uh, he may be like his address, his phone number. So of different type, a tuple representing a record in a portfolio. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, Tyler, do you want to add something on uh, Isabel? Like, why do we need to use Tuple if you have something to say? Um, no, I don't have anything. I think I've seen it used a lot um, when we get more into creating like different classes and objects in mm -hmm. Python. You got to pass it around, um, which is pretty different from coding in R. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think it'll probably make more sense or it'll feel more intuitive then. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right okay let's continue um so the next one we see here they discuss is dictionary so dictionary basically um uh, as you know is a mapping of um, key and values right so we all know dictionaries is a key this is, and we dic uh, create dictionary in this format right so this is a dictionary and uh we can actually modify some values in dictionary so here we say here we assign the value here it is we add modifying the value of share to this guy to 75. You can also delete um, the items in the dictionary. So here we can delete, um, we use the keyword here, delete. Um, uh, we put the object S and uh, we put this, then we delete them here. We can also, um, so this modification delete is like in place. Uh, it just delete the item. But also if we want to have the item that has been deleted in some ways, we want to use it in some just to remove we can use the method called pop so when we remove the method you can see here the method pop would actually um pop the value of the um uh, the, uh of this key and when we look at this we can see that the the uh, the dictionary because we pop we delete remain only one item and now we have a method also for dictionary which is items which actually brings the um collection of the keys and values, right? So this is dictionary items. So uh, if we look at them here, we see S, we can see dot. So this S is a dictionary. You look at a lot of other methods that can be applied to dictionary, copy from key, get items, key. So keys actually gives you the, uh, the, the keys, right? So when we run this, it, this will give you the key. Um, yeah, can you see the key name? So we have a lot of method um, related to that. Um, but also here you see when we have this, um, you can call a method of list to change these items, this guy, because this is a dictionary object. This is an object, um, but you can call a method to return everything into somehow kind of a list, right? We can change it to a list. Yeah, so this is the first part of the session. Uh, the second thing they talk about is still um, containers. So here they say, um, 
program open work with many objects. Um, in Python, there are three uh, there are three main choices to use: list, dictionary, and set. So, lists are ordered data, just like a tuple we have seen. They are ordered. Dictionary, they are unordered, um, and set they are also unordered. So let's look at um, uh, how to work with each one of them. So list uh, usually uh, use a list when the order of data matters, right? So when the order of the data matters, um, we can use a list. Remember that list can hold any kind of object. So just like a list, um, I mean tuple uh, list can co or contain any kind of object. Is it a list? Yeah, so list of tuples. So this means that what is here is this. So portfolio is basically list of tuples. Um, yeah, so this is basically um, list of tuples. So we can see the first tuple here. We can see the second one. We can see the third one. Um, so uh, this is a list of tuples. And basically, we can set the element inside it. So when we see this guy, when we see this guy um, will actually give us the first one, uh, this is the first tuple, right? So this will give us um, the first tuple here. What about if we want to assess this guy, uh, the first tuple and the first item? So we can use uh, this guy and we say, okay, this guy, and when we run this, this will be give us the first item, right? So the first one um, refers to this guy and the second guy refers to, so if you have a nested list, nested, nested, you can add another square bracket to assess the items in a form of listed, uh, yeah. So this is how you can access the content of a um, list. Um, so this is one way also to uh, construct a list. So here you we have a, empty list so this is how you define an empty list right this is empty list and we can add a lot of stuff to it so for example append is a method for the list that can be used to add stuff in it also append here so when we run this we can see that this list uh, record will contain two um, lists right so this is append method so also if we look at this guy we say records when we say record um we use this guy, you can see method related to append, right? Because each object in Python, um, everything is object in Python and each object has its own specific method and class and functions, uh, method and attributes. So you can see here, you can use clear, which is used to remove everything, count to count the number of items in the list, extend to uh, extend uh, the list, given a list, you can extend it with another list. Uh, so let's look at this guy. Um, so oh, yeah, we can use extend, for example, uh, extend, right? So yeah, so you can see extend method here. For example, I have this. So I have an existing list here and I can use extend method here. Uh, let's look at what will happen. So when I call my records here, um, yep, when I call my records here, you can see, yeah, you can see I extend the, uh, yeah. So this is a menu um, actually a method that we can use with the list. You can remove, you can pop. This is reverse. So you can actually reverse the uh, content. This is sort, these are a lot of stuff that we can uh, do on that. This is an example where it didn't record from a file. So we saw that um, um, list can be served as a container. So this is an example actually to uh, store a list, um, uh, some stuff from a, a file. So we have a file called portfolio, portfolio the CSV, and uh, we want to retrieve its item and store inside a record, inside a list. Now, how can we do that? Um, let's look at this file. So this is a file. Um, this is a file, right? Um, we can see name, share, price, a, a, you know, this is just a file with three columns, right? Now, the thing is we want to do basically is this. So we want to, we want to take these items. We, we don't want the header and we want to just this content and uh, assign it into a file, uh, into a list. We want to assign them into a list. So this is, we create an empty list first. We say, okay, 
So in Python, just like um, uh, in R, normally when you want to open a file, you just say read underscore CSV tidy was um, um, really great way to work with that. But in Python, even though in Pandas, you can just uh, read CSV and stuff like that. But if you want to um, work in Python uh, to do anything, you need to open a file. When you open the file, then you need to read it, you need the content, right? Or like RSS. So here, uh, and the importance of width is that um, you open the file and uh, it automatically close when you exceed, uh, when you finish working on it. So if you are not using the width format, you need to exclusively tell the file to close it. So here we say width, open this file, and this is uh, the, uh, you need to put the mode you want to open the file. And we say as object P, but we say nest F. So we open the file now in this line, but we say nest F. This means that uh, uh, we are actually nest F, it opened the file. So when it opened the file, it has several um, lines. So the first line here, we say nest F. So it means it uh, skipped the first line. No, this line, it skipped this line. And um, then it's go into the for loop for line in F. So because we know that when we open the file CSV, F means every line in the, the first, it, it stood all the files in file. So here for line in F, the first line row that line split. So it will split this guys, split this guy using comma. It's the line the split and assign it to a, uh, a, a variable called row. And now since we have um, empty list, we can append. So row, the first thing that it split is assigned to the row using comma and uh, row one is convert to integer float. The second item is convert to float. Let's, let me show how this works. So if we look at this, we run this. Now this is what the, uh, the end record. So look at what it means. So here you can see uh, this is the content because this is a CSV. Um, so this is A, this is number, this is number. So because this is integer, this is float, this is just a string. So when they read it, because this guy will read it all in string, so it, it converted into integer, the first one, it converted the second one to float, this one is, and now you can see it attached to string. So, but uh, here when I, I print this, I put something here. Look at it here. When it opened the file and now line the split, when it does the split and sign to a row, what is row? Look at what the row looks like. This is the first item. This is the second item. This is the third item. So here we want to assign the first item, row, row, row the first one to here. And now int, because this is integer, it, you can see it's in string, it looking string, right? That is why they call integer. This is also a double, but in string, right? That is why they call float. So that is why it turns like this. So this is one way you can see now we actually read something from a file and now put it in, in a list. Yeah. So that is um, list as a container. Um, does anyone want to add something on top of that? Tyler, Isabel? I think so. I think it makes sense. Okay, right. So let's move on with dictionary as container. So now we have seen, um, um, list as container. The next one is dictionary as container. So dictionary can also be serve as container to store items. Um, yeah, so let's go this way. And now here we can see this is how we create dictionary using these curly braces and uh, giving a key and the value, key and the value, key and the value. Now um, we can actually retrieve items using the key. So here IVM will retrieve this a key. Um, yeah, so. Um, this is also how we can actually uh, insert new items into the dictionary, right? There's some way we um, we create an, an uh, um, empty dictionary here, right? Um, here we say, this is a key, this is a value. So here you can see here. Yeah, so this is actually um, um, one way we can create. Um, so here we see that uh, given you have everything, you can create the dictionary in this way. But also you can create dictionary from the beginning, initial, uh, you have empty stuff and you populate it. Um, dictionary can be used as a lookup. Um, so here you can see uh, basically, uh, you can see, okay, uh, 
you remember prices means um, it's a dictionary, right? This is a price and these are the key, right? Key, key. Now, when dictionary is used in a list, in a for loop, so for example, I say if cut in prices. So cut in prices is mean cut will be tried to be checked. Is it inside the key, not a value? Is it a key inside in prices? So whenever we use uh, whether for or something like that, it refers to the key in this guy. So if this is this, it will print, uh, yeah, because cut is a key, right? It's a key, right? Um, so, um, so also this one, uh, we can see that uh, cut not in prices, um, else cut is in the dictionary. So this is um, actually look up uh, how we can look up uh, a, a dictionary. Um, here we can also um, use a method for dictionary. So if you look at this one here, we can see prices. And when we look at the method, um, oh no, prices. So you can see we have like a gate, yeah. So items, key, pop, pop items, set default, update. So set default is used to set the default value in a dictionary. So, um, but this one get items, basically try to get a particular item with it is on um, value. Um, so here, when you see this, the item for value, the, va the value for IBM is basically, uh, as you know, is this, um, yeah, this is the IBM, this is the value. But when we use a get method, we basically try to, so the issue why we use this, um, uh, okay, let me show. So here, you can see we have get score, but score is not available. So instead for it to return um, an error, it will return a default value. So we use get to try to extract a key, but if the key is not available, it will return maybe a default. So you can set the default value whatsoever it is. Uh, unlike when you try to use these um, prices, um, prices, and uh, you try to say, okay, give me, um, yes, uh, give me score, right? So give me score. So you remember here, I want to get this uh, item of score. So you can see when you try, it will give you an error, right? So to prevent getting such kind of error in your program, you can try to always set a default. So get allow you to uh, set the default for, yeah. We have also what is called composite keys. So the keys for dictionary can be composite. You can see the key here are tuple, right? The key are tuple. So the, uh, the dictionary key can be a tuple, can be anything. So one thing we should know is that the dictionary key must be immutable. So this means that key cannot be, uh, cannot be a, a list, right? So here you can see uh, we have this uh, dictionary. And now here, for example, this is uh, a holidays, so the month and the date, the month and the date, right? So because it's something that can be represented as two items. So here we can, this is how we uh, actually uh, assess it. So you can see here we say 314 or like a single item. So if we have the composite key, this is how we can assess it. So here we can see we have the, right? It can give us this. But one thing we should know is that um, uh, if for a composite um, key, we cannot have, um, we cannot have um, uh, the key to be um, uh, to be mutable, like list. So here, for example, if I change this guy to be a list, to be a list, and this guy to be a list, this guy to be a list, also this to be a list. So when I change this to be a list, um, what this will happen is that we'll have an error, right? You can see this. So what is meaning is that the keys in a dictionary must be immutable. So list cannot be that. Um, yeah. So any other data. Yeah. So that is it. Um, so neither list a set because these two guys list and set they are mutable, right? So no, uh, no another dictionary can serve as a dictionary key because list and dictionary are uh, are all what mutable. So that is uh, um, dictionary. Okay then we can go to the list. So um, set are basically a collection of unordered unique items. So 
set are basically unordered like a dictionary they are unordered um but one thing with them they are unique right um so here when we run this we can see that uh, here we have apple um ibm whatsoever and now we can see here we represent what is called a set using calibrus is like this uh but we can also use this keyword like this you can see this we can represent a set in two ways uh we can just use this guy or we can use this keyword uh, these guys we use the same thing for example list topo also we use to create them so when we run this and um, this will give us um, what is called a set so you can see this is a set and uh set are useful for membership test so um set are actually one way is to are useful for membership set so for example here we can say uh um ibm is it in text talk yeah so we can see this we say yes uh this guy and this guy you can say if it is it's said true so i also use uh to remove duplicate so if for example here i have up ibm ibm you can see i have ibm two right um so but um i want to make sure that everything i have in my list of items is unique so i can call set on that list so that it can return the unique item so one um application of uh set is basically um to uh remove duplication um so set has many other operations for example add item remove item uh, it has set union this is union trying to find a union of two set intersection and set differences so these are some stuff that we already know um that can or some of the operation for set uh, yeah all right any question oh, we want to add something all right so the next thing we list look at is formatting um so sometimes you want to format your output so we see a lot of formatting here the first thing is um uh, we'll look at what is called old string old school string formatting so in python if you want to format string you will use what is called uh ampersand sign is it a percentage sign so here for example i have a name eric and now i want to format my string so what i can do is i will use this kind of uh, 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 uh percentage sign and this guy and now i put the uh, uh, my variable here and put these guys in code and now call this when i run this they will put whatsoever here inside here it will replace it right uh but when you have multiple more than one item then you need to encode them in form of tuple so you can see this is a tuple right you can put them in form of tuple so here i have eric and i have age so i want to put this guy so i put this as a placeholder you can see that this as a placeholder so the first item will be assigned here the second will be assigned here and now here i need to use this one as well remember uh before you call the tuple here so when i run these guys you see uh they will replace this stuff here um this is uh, actually cumbersome when you have many items you can look at it now when i have many items here for example i have many variable and i want to uh, put them here you can see the stuff will be like cumbersome and not uh, and looks ugly and confusing so python comes with what we call string that format instead of this uh, percentage side so string format actually is what it does is that there's something with um the previous uh stop but what it does is use this curly braces and now use all the string here that is string dot format right string dot format that is everything all here is a string then you have dot format then you put your variable so here you put the curly braces as a placeholder the first one will be replaced here and the second one will replace here so when we run this um this will actually uh, give us this guy so um you can also represent this guy you can uh uh interchange them it's not necessarily these guys must be um in order because you can represent it so here when i have this the first one will be here because this is double zero will be one it will be so age will be put here name will be put it it's not necessarily they must be in order so this is one way we should know um this is how it works yeah so you can also use um these guys um uh for neat trick with dictionary so when we use this double star remember in tuple we use um only one star right remember previously i used one star to unpack a tuple so when you want to unpack a dictionary you use the double star so here i have a dictionary right i have a name i have age now i want to uh 
can you see person? And I want to take um, the name and I want to take the age. So I can use this trick, star star person. This will give you, this star star will give you not the key, but will collect the values. So here you can see when you have this, this will collect the values. So this is a string formatter. This one is also still bubbles. It's not convenient. It's not easy. The new one in Python from Python 3.6 is what you call F string formatting. So F string formatting is the best way now people are using, but this is also, it's good for people to know uh, that one. So this is how it is used. Expression then form format and you put F. So you can see here I have my name is debit and now you put F, then you put the object and you just need to put string and now you put the name. Or like uh, the difference between this, the previous one, uh, here, this one, you need to use dot format and put the this top, uh, not dot format, and you put this top here. But now everything, this are removed, all this one is removed. You just need to put F be before and now put the variable inside. So here you can see um, the F string here. Yeah, right, so we have debit here, right? And, um, yeah, so we have also what is called, because there is expression. If you have a colon, then that is what you call format. So it means you can format your expression here. So here you can see I have debit name. So I want to format debit, but I put uh, column dot three. It means I uh, give me the first three string in debit. Um, you can see hello dev. So this is format here within format, right? So you can basically have everything inside here. So here we have a function, and now you can have an F string, you can have to lower. This is a function that taking anything, it will uh, lower it, input the lower. Now here you can see here we have Eric, and now we have to lower, we have the name. But everything, even the function is inside the, uh, this, uh, this guy, this uh, curly braces. So you can have even function, uh, it works, right? So yeah. And um, we can format digits. So here you can see it's like four decimal places. Now I can say price, you can see called dot, right? Format 2F meant to two significant digit, right? So when I format this guy, this will give me something like this, um, 2.49. So this is basically um, F string. You can also have multi line F string. So here I can high, I can have S string like this, but this is multi line. So this will give me um, my, uh, this top in multi-line. Uh, person integer, uh, yeah. So um, person, person and integer after this, this will cause that field to be minimum number of characters. So what this means is that, uh, look at it here. I have this table. So I say for name, phone in table dot item. So the this is a dictionary dot items. What is basically it will return the items uh, the key will be assigned to name, the value will be assigned to phone. So I will go around. So for name, phone, in table that item, that is the first one. The name will contain this, the phone will contain this, that, and it will print. And now it will go back to the next side, next four, because it's four, then the name will be assigned Jack, the value, the phone will be assigned this. So item actually return the item. So you can see here, I say print name, 10, phone 10. So this means that if I print name, I will have 10 spaces. So let me show you what will happen. You can see if I print name, Joe, this character, this space, and now this guy, and now this 10 space, can you see that? So this is basically, it can be used to maybe construct a table or something like that. And this one as well, um, you can see here what this means is that uh, uh, it uh, put less uh, five uh, from the left. Let me change this guy to look like this. It will be, um, yeah, can you see it? Like uh, five spaces from right, right? Now, um, this one push. So this is basically just a couple of, these are some of the format code that can be used to format your stuff. And this also, you can see greater than this, in integer right align, 10 character field, integer left align. So these are uh, many other things that you can format your code. This F string, 
may, uh, the F in F string means it is fast to do this kind of uh, uh, string formatting. Yeah. Okay. Anything? Any question? Um, so for formatting a dictionary, we can use what is called format map. So format map actually format dictionary. So all like um, the other one, if you want to format your dictionary, we can use format map to format the dictionary. So there's something here as well. All right, so the next section is called a sequence. And um, basically Python has um, what we call a sequence, uh, something that contains uh, the data type that contains sequence of item. So we have string, we have list, we have tuple. They are sequence, they contain some stuff. So here this section discuss about this kind of data structures. So all sequence are ordered, indexed by integer and have length. So all sequence are ordered, right? So they have some order, all sequence, string, list, and uh, they can be indexed. So here I have, hello, B, this, this is string, this is tuple. And now I can see when I say A of zero, it will give me the first item, which is H. When I say A of minus one, this will give me the five because negative indexing start from the last, from the last part. Positive indexing start from the beginning. C of one will give me good. Uh, C of one, oh, it will give me 100. So this is indexing. We can also find the length of uh, sequence using this function length of this will give you the length of the item. We can also replicate, uh, actually, um, when I have S, I have A times three will actually repli replicate A. So you can replicate that. We can also have, yeah, this is still the same thing. When I have this, will basically replicate the uh, B uh, to many items. Um, you can also do string concatenation. So I have A and B, you can concatenate uh, sequence. So this is called sequence. Uh, sequence can be concatenated. Either a string or top, I mean, either a list or string or um, top, they can be concatenated. But you cannot concatenate with different items. The next one is slicing, which we already know as well. I'm given an item called A, you can slice. So slicing basically takes some part of your list. So for example, I want to take from zero, one to two, one to four, this is called slicing. So here, two to five, it means take from two to five. Five is not included, remember, five is not included. So here we'll take zero, one, two, three, four, right? So you can see two, three, four, minus five. So minus five, it means it start counting from minus five. So this is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So it's start counting from minus five, which is this one here, until the end. So when you omit something, it means go to the end. So it means it's count from four to the uh, eight, which is eight. And now when you omit something from the beginning, it means start from the beginning. So this means that uh, start from zero up to not including three, start from zero to up to not including three. So give you zero, one, two. Yeah, so this is basically um, uh, what you call slicing in Python. Yeah, you can also do what is called reassignment. So for example here, you can see I have um, a list of these guys, um, but you, we can reassign some values to existing list. So you can see here, I have to say, okay, A, two to four means zero one from here two zero four or uh, to four so you can see uh, zero one two three four that is from here to here assign these numbers right but excuse me um you can see here what happens here is that um you can see here what happened is previously here is two right so we now put 10 can you see that 11 now substitute this and 12 substitute what four um right uh three uh four five six yeah okay not including four so it will substitute in the position of two and three so two and three ten and eleven but uh you can see 12 also uh, is there so um uh, it will uh move the other item to the end so yeah, so that's uh, about uh, uh, slicing. Then the next one is iteration over a sequence. So one thing you can see is that uh, you can iterate, uh, they are talking now about sequence, something that you can go over them, list, tuple, and string. Now, 
We can also go over sequence to uh, iterate over them. This is a list and we can do uh, iteration over it. Uh, so this is something we already know and we can iterate over it. Uh, but we can also loop over integer. What do we mean by loop over integer? So we have what is called a range function in Python. Um, here we have a range which is 20. Uh, it means uh, 20 means from 0 to 20, from 0 to 19, excluding 20. So this is called lazy evaluation, uh, lazy function, because it does not store the consecutive values. It store um, the, from the beginning to the end. So we, when we run this guy, it will actually print values from one to, yeah. But here I say um, the modulo, right? It will give us this stuff. Um, so we also know that um, range basically has this. Um, so if I have this range, uh, when we look at the range, yeah, so you can see range basically has start, stop, right? And also it has um, what you call, uh, uh um what do you call it step so for example here i say okay two to ten so this is uh this will give me range of value from two to ten right but um when i say okay uh, list return the complete values this will give me something like this can you see the numbers right so range is lazy, it, it's efficient in memory because it does not store the whole items. It just store two numbers, now two and 10. So Python know that it, there are something in between. So range is efficient. But also you can see the default value, it goes is one, two, three. It, uh, it, 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 um, it moves from once, the step is one. Now I can put another item, like I say the step is two. So this means that when I run this guy, yeah, you can see the step is two from two to four. So this is range. Uh, yeah, so this is range. They discuss about this. They discuss about the, the it start. The start is optional and default to zero. So if you don't, you you just give range twenty. It means it start from zero. It's optional. But uh, also if you stop step is optional. Default is one. So if you don't actually provide a step, it's one by default. Right. So um, they uh, the uh, these functions, can you also use another method called enumerate? We are all still, don't forget, we are talking about um, uh, what we call sequence, uh, something that you can go over. So they have what is called enumerate function, so method. So here I have a list. Um, when I call enumerate on this list, what will happen is that enumerate take, uh, uh, enumerate actually um, reports the position of object, item, position of item, and the item itself. So here, when we have for i name, you can see now I have two items here, two variables, i name in enumerate names. So you can see enumerate names, uh, names is only a list of items. So i will be the position, and name will contain the first item. So here, i will be zero in the first round, name will contain Elwood. If it goes the second one, i will contain one, the position object. So let's run this guy and see. You can see that zero means the position because Python starts from zero. So enumerate is a method that actually return an enumerate object and object support. Now. The enumerate object yield pair. Can you see the enumerate object yield pairs containing a count from start with the default or zero and stuff like that. So that's enumerate method. And also you can use um, four and tuples uh, on, uh, on object, which is um, sequence. So here I have uh, a, a list of tuples. You can see I have a list, I have tuple inside. Now, when I actually uh, wanna iterate over the members in the tuple, so I can use for x, in y, for x, y in point, it means the x will be the first one here, the y will be the second one here. If the tuples are three, then I can add z. So here you can see I can print them here. Yeah, so that's, um, yeah, another thing for this guy's kind of stuff, they have what is called zip function. So zip function, basically what it does is actually it takes item from two lists and put them together. So you can see here we have one list and we have second list. And now when I, when I call zip on these guys, 
what it will basically does is it will take this guy and this guy and put them in together. This guy and this guy put them together. This guy and this guy put together. But the the return items for zip is uh, object. Uh, it's an object of zip. So you cannot actually work toward that. Um, but we can call um, something on this zip. I can say, okay, return a list, something like this. Let me see this. When I call uh, call a list on this return. Yeah, you can see it return a list, right? So you can see it takes this guy and this guy. Can you see them here? Take this guy and this guy, put them here, take this guy and yeah. So, uh, but you can also not using like this, you can use uh, four to actually get the result of your object. So you can see here, I call list on this object. Remember, zip returns an object. You can also even call tuple on it. Say tuple. You can also even call tuple on it to return the it as tuple. Uh, okay, I can run this guy first. Then I can run it, this guy. Can you see it's return tuples, right? Um, so um, one way is you can also use four, right? You can use four to go over it. So we can see for column value in PS, print these guys. So this will give us uh, the same thing. So you can use also four to go into this the PS here. Remember, PS is not um, any list, but is object. PS here is object. So here we put the PS, which is the object of zip. But Python know how to uh, actually go over the zip object. Right. So let's move on. It's already time. We have a few minutes. Uh, we have list comprehension. I don't know what we can do. Uh, okay, let me quickly go. We have what is called list comprehension in Python, which is basically a good feature in Python. So what happened um, uh, as a motivation for that? So for example, now you can see here, if I want to create a list of squares of numbers, I need to use list, right? I need to use for loop for i in the range squares that append. This method append because I create an empty list square. And now I create the square, I append it to go over and print this. But this is too cumbersome with many lines of code, but we can use what is called list comprehension. So how can we create a list comprehension? So these guys, we can use this format, uh, which is for member in iterable expression. I will explain this. So what this guy means that you said, okay, for I, for this is for member, it means we can say X, anything, in the object, a range for anything in this range, return the square i times i, right? That is for member in iterable. Iterable, these are the sequence we talk about, like list, string, and uh, tuple. They are iterable. So for i in the range, return the square. So this is basically the uh, basic uh, format of what is called, uh, uh, what do we call it? Um, uh, List comprehension. Um, this is also another one. So here, this is basically the explanation of that. Expression is the member itself. So what happening, what is expression? Member itself, whatsoever it is. Um, uh, the member, the iterable here must be the iterable or anything other stuff like that. But also with the list comprehension, we can do what is called comp uh, filtering. So what do we mean by filtering? The format will change. So expression the same as the previous for vary anything in this, but you have what is called if condition at the end. So you can see here we have we don't have in condition if condition. We just want here we only create a list. For creating a list, this is the basic format. For member in iterable return expression. Here you can see here we have a list, and I say for x in a, return two times x right. So you can see here, we give me this. So if you want to filter something, so you can see here, condition are important because they allow list comprehension to filter out unwanted value, which will normally require to call filter. So for example here, given a list of string, we could filter out string with length two or less. So given this is a string, we want to filter out string that has length two or less. So we can use that. So you can see, I said for X in string, if length is greater than two, they return x dot upper. 
that is the x uh, so here you can call anything so or function on that so you can see we add this so here you can do filtering uh, with condition at the end uh, but also you can do uh, here you can see this another example we have a list now we say for x in a if x is greater than zero so if x is greater than zero return two times x it means i want to filter remove anything that is negative I want to return uh, what is positive. So you can see here only the positive list. So you can see we do filter. This is called filtering with um, uh, list comprehension. But we also have what is called updating values with list comprehension. You can update. So how this works. So this is something uh, we have four member in iterable. Then your expression is here. But after the expression, you have your condition here. Unlike the filtering where your condition is at the end, the condition now is immediately after expression. Let me show you an example. So for example, if you have a list of prices, then you may want to replace negative prices with zero and leave the positive on change. So you can see here, I'm not filtering, I'm not removing anything, but I'm changing the list that is updating the value. If the value is negative, I will put zero. But if it is greater, if it is less than zero, I'll put zero. But if it is greater, I'll leave it. So this is look at what I do. For I in original price, that is it. If i is greater than zero, return i, else return zero. So this is the condition. This is the condition. Can you see that? For i in original price, if i is greater than zero, return i. I mean, return i, if i is greater than zero, else zero. So this is basically the way uh, list comprehension are uh, used for updating values. Uh, so we are on top of our actually. Uh, so uh, I think um, we can, yeah. So uh, the Isabel also is dropping. So I think maybe we can stop here uh, because it's um, uh, already time. Tell her what about, can we, uh, we need to drop right now, right? Um, I'm not on a tight time limit. Okay, so I think um, we can quickly finish the remaining because next week we can start uh, the next chapter, but uh, Isabel is dropping. So Isabel, um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, yeah, we, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll see you next week. <laughs> thank you. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Right. Um, so, yeah, so this is actually... Um, uh for this is actually for updating values but we also have what is called next list comprehension so what this next list so look at this one guy list this list so all this example we saw they are basically list right but when we have nested list how can we do list comprehension in nested list so here you can see i have list but i have items inside the first one we have the second one we have the third one so it means this is nested list. There is something inside or nested list with the loops. There is something. So here we're gonna use something uh, next. So here in example, we want to actually flatten this to a single list. I want to flatten this to a single list. So I can say for tuple in some tuple. So you can see for tuple in some tuple. So this means that for tuple in some tuple, it means the first, Tuple, tuple, this means tuple. This is the first tuple. This is the second top. This is the second top, right? So I say for top in some tuple. Now again, for X in tuple. So you can see the first top is this guy, right? Now for any value in it, return X. So when I run this, it means uh, this will give me a single uh, list of items. So what we should know in this list list is this. The four part of the list comprehension are arranged according to the order of next thing. Yeah, so this far arranged of those. So here, this is uh, present uh, evaluated for then this guy. Uh, yeah, so this is next loop with a lot of stuff in it. But also there is what he discussed about historical digression that uh, the list comprehension basically comes from set builder notation in mathematics, where we say, okay, if X belongs to X and X is greater than zero, return this guy. Um, this is uh, something in mathematics called set bit annotation. Uh, yeah. All right. So the, uh, I think the last part of this uh, 
section is called objects. Um, so what it's saying here, everything in Python is objects, right? So everything in Python is object. Uh, let's look at what that means. Um, so we want to discuss here what is called um, uh, basically uh, uh, assignment. Um, so assignment operation in Python actually is basically it makes neighbor makes a copy. All assignment are references. So let's look at what will happen. Assignment are what is called references. They don't make actually a copy. So let's look at the, what they are saying. So here I have assigned A equals to this list and A is equals to B. Now I have C equals to this. So when I run this guy, it means my B is contain the content of A, right? My B contain the content of A. And uh, C also contain the con A and B. So C will contain these guys, right? The same thing. Now, the issue now, when you update A, when you update A, now let me show you. When I update A, I append, I add more stuff to the A. So you can see A now contain this. But the issue is when you update A, B will be updated as well. Can you see B is updated as well? So it means that this kind of assignment C, if I do this, it means C will also, can you see updated? So this, everything in, is pointing to the same thing. No copy has been made. So when you do this kind of stuff in Python, you just assign value. Some of the value you do this, you are not actually doing a copy. You are actually assigning a reference. So if you look at this guy, this is what he discussed is that now we create A, they are just pointing the same references. There is only one item. So it, this means that if I change this guy, everything in other stuff is already changed. So how can we actually prevent this uh, stuff? The, we have what is called um, shallow copy and deep copy, right? So let's look at it here. Um, to recover again, I have a list. Uh, this is A, this is B. Uh, you can see here, I do assignment as well. Uh, B is, B is, A is B. Yes, it's true, A is B. Um, right um but now i want to update the a um a to uh, assign many uh, another content so this means that you can see now a look at the content of a is 100 and 101 right one on 100 and 101 now i update it contents can you see the content right now um just a recap as i said so when i run b b its content will also be updated. Now, so we don't want to avoid, we want to avoid this situation. What we need to do is what we need to do, what is called shallow copy, right? Shallow copy. So what does that mean? So here I have my list. For me to copy A into B, I can use this format. I just say list A. This list A assigned to B, it copy A to B. So when I run this guy, this will say A is not equal to B. Can you see that? A is not B. It means uh, they don't actually share the same reference. They, they have different reference. But um, this uh, instead of using list, you can use what is called copy. So we can say a.copy. It means now you copy A again to actually, um, so you can see this guy would say they are not the same because they are of different, um, uh, they are referencing this different stuff. So you can see this guy say is false, right? So, this means that when I modify A, this means B will not be modified automatically. Let me show you that. So when I say, okay, uh, let me update the A position uh, with two, uh, uh, 200. Okay, let's look at A. Right, so you can see now A, we update this one. Now let's look at B. Like you can see B does have still 100. Its position is not changed, uh, value not changed. So this is what we call shallow copy, right? This is called shallow copy. So you can see here, both have different memory locations. So they have different memory location. Uh, but what about this? So you see here, this is a list of lists, right? I have list and have three lists inside. Now I copy this guy. 
So here I copy, it. I, I, I do shallow copy using this. And now it's X, X equals this. You can see they are not the same. But what will happen now? So you see, I say, okay, the first item, uh, first item. So this guy, I said the first one, which is will be this. And the first item, which is four, replaces with 100. So this means that I'm changing XX. So um, XS will now look like this. Right? You can see SS now is looking like this, right? So because we do shallow copy, remember we use the list, right? Do you think um, YX will change? Uh, tell her, do you think YS will change or will remain the same? So uh, here, here we can see that YX, YX also changes, right? YX also changes. This means that uh, the shallow copy we have, you see the previous one we have shallow copy where it doesn't change, it's only a single item. When we have a list, we have single item inside. But in a situation where you have nested list can you see nested list this means that all other items can be changed if you change any item can change the original one but if you change you do something on the whole list that is when it will not happen so here you can see we change something inside the list it actually append the or the one the one we copy so the nested list refers to the same memory location. But what about changing the original X of the not the nested? So here you can see XX, XX, which is the original I append with, I add another item in the list. So let me show you. So here we can see XX. I append something in the whole one, two, three, in the whole object access. Not something, I do not actually add something inside or change it. So if, since I work on the, I modify the whole object, it means YX will not also be affected. It means it will contain, return the original value. Can you see that? It does not return the original. I don't know, Taylor, do you get it or you have question? No, I get it, yeah. And that's a good explanation. Okay, right. Okay. so. Um, yeah, so how can we actually prevent like um, if we if we don't want to actually if we modify the original one, we go inside and modify, it. we don't want to the copy one also to get affected. So we can do what is called deep copy. Deep copy will go inside and make sure that nothing is affected. So let's go on, but we need to import the copy here. So we have this guy. When we have this guy, so here for us to say we copy this A, we need to say copy because we import module module, uh, copy, we say copy dot module A, now we copy this. So here you see when I, when I change A, the original A, I change the value, uh, A, you can see here the 100. Now we can see uh, B, uh, yeah, B will remain, it's, uh, it, uh, it remain at ease, just like, uh, normal uh, shallow copy without uh, nested. So what about uh, div copy if we have, so you can see here I have nested list inside. So now I zoom, I want to, uh, I copy it. It means now I have uh, my A, this is my B, which actually I copy from this one. So now let's assume that I want to append uh, the second item here. You can see zero, one, two. The second item I want to append one or two. I want to update it. So here I update the second item. Uh, yeah, so you can see here of update A, right? Uh, I add one more item in A. Now, uh, what do we expect to happen? Does A, B that we copy using div copy will be affected? No, B will not be affected. So when we run B, we can see that B is actually intact, nothing happened. So this is called deep copy. It will go inside any nest to make sure nothing happens to yeah stuff so yeah so that's um what you call deep copy and uh, shallow copy in python and last but not the least is basically um we have what you call a keyword called type 
which actually tells us the kind of type of data structure we have. So here you can see we have uh, this guy, uh, which is this, it will tell us it's the string. Uh, this is uh, just like uh, in R, what do we have in R related to this? Is it type? Uh, There's STR, which I think is structure. There might be a type. Yeah, I forgot, <laughs> actually. Yeah, I forgot. So there's also what is called type checking. So this type checking will try to see uh, what kind of type is this. So here is a in, is instant, is instant. It so try to show you what kind of instant is this guy. So you can see this is, uh, is this integer? A is, is integer uh, because we assign an integer value to it. So this is instant checking. Um, yeah, so yeah, last but not least, everything in Python is object. So that is what is called the notion of what we call first class in Python. So first class means everything can be used, uh, uh, used normally as object, nothing uh, happens. So for example, now here, I import math object, and now I have absolute function method. I have math module, I have value error inside a list, I make a list. Now, this is a list, right? So I can call item zero, Will, will give me absolute value, I call it on. So basically this is how we calculate absolute value, right? Absolute value of, for example, minus four. Uh, when I have absolute value here, this will give me five, right? But here I have a list and inside this list, I have absolute. So zero here, right? Absolute zero will return absolute. So it will insert absolute and give this one, so here will give me the absolute value of minus 45. This means that functions or method can be used as any object in Python. So everything in Python is object. So you can see here items. What is item one? Item one is math, right? So we can do, remember, math the square root, right? So here I will insert math. So here math the square root will calculate the square root of this value, which will return. Yeah, we will understand this guy. Um, also here will uh, 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 the escape uh, where we have the, uh, you can see here we have value error. So here when we have that, we can also item, item two is value error. So this will, so this is basically um, what we have for today. Um, yeah, we, sorry Taylor for getting over time. <laughs> we have 15 minutes more. Yeah, this is totally fine. Um, yeah, I thought this chapter was good. I wish um, like the different use cases were a little bit more well-defined. Which one? Yeah, I felt like it was a lot of information on like, here's all these different settings um, or here's all like these different collections of things and it would have been mm -hmm. better. Or I think we enjoyed it a little bit more if I had seen them compared and contrast a little bit, like the difference between list and dictionaries for lookup, um, with dictionaries uh, being faster for it being oh, yeah. ordered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think um, um, one thing they made mention is like dictionary is faster, right? I think uh, for lookup, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but the book also has um, a lot of exercises. I think I would yes. start. I will start doing the exercises. Um, if I have any question, try to uh, drop it in the channel so that um, yeah, maybe I'll start doing it. Uh, maybe from tomorrow, just trying to see how it goes. Yeah, because um, it's really good for us to practice the uh, exercise to make sure everything goes into our memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So thank you. Um, see you um till next week. Sounds good. See okay. you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.